For many of you, the tonal controls you'll find in the basic panel will be enough. But if you want more control over the way tonal values are distributed in your image, you'll need to turn to the point curve found in the Tone Curve panel shown here. In this video, you'll learn the basics of using both the region tone controls and the point tone controls. Let's start with the region tone controls, which I think are the easiest to use. It's hard to mess up an image with these controls, unlike the point curve, which can be more like skating on slippery ice. So you see here the graph at the very top, and then underneath, under region, highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. And of course, there's a relationship between these two. So if I put my cursor over the highlight slider, you can see up in the graph above, a bubble forms up at the top part of the graph. If I put my cursor over the lights, it's more over the middle region. And then at the bottom, the shadows. And by now, you're starting to get an idea how this graph actually works. The horizontal axis represents the original intensity values of the pixels. The vertical axis represents the new tonal values. So when you have a line that is perfectly straight like this, and you look up at the upper left-hand corner here, you can see the values are exactly the same. Input is the same as output. Now this is going to change as we start moving these sliders or start moving this curve. So let's start with the highlights. I'm going to move the highlight slider to the right, and now watch what happens up above. You can see as I move the slider to the right, the curve is moving up. The highlights are now brightening. If I move the slider down, the highlights are going to darken. And you can see that reflected over here on the left in the preview area. So that's moving our highlight region, brightening it, and then darkening it. Now, the other thing you can do if you don't want to just work from the slider, you can actually come right up to the graph itself. And you see now my cursor turns into an up and down arrow. And I can click and drag down and click and drag up. And you can see the sliders moving in relationship to what I'm doing with the graph. OK, so let's leave that there and move down to the light slider. I'm going to move that to the left. Now watch, we're moving a different part of the curve darkening it to the left. And as I move to the right, we brighten up that area. And let me go ahead. I'm going to reset both these values. I can do that by simply double clicking there on that arrow. Or I can hold down the Option or Alt key. And you can see this turns into Reset Region. So now everything's back to its default. I'm going to move the dark slider to the left. I just want you to see how it's working both the graph, the line there, and also in the image, the darks are darkening. And I'll move it to the right to brighten them up. And let's reset that. And I'm going to move the shadow slider to the left, which darkens our shadows. And now we can open up our shadows. And once again, I could have done that directly from the graph by holding my cursor over the line, dragging down to darken, and dragging up to brighten. Let me go ahead and reset. OK, as if that's not enough, there's another way that you can control these regions or points. And that's by using the Target Adjustment tool. If you select that up here in the upper left-hand corner, now it's selected. You have the arrow on the top and the bottom. And I'll move this over to my image in the preview area. And watch what happens as I move that cursor around on the graph line. You can see as I move into a brighter area, the point starts, it's marked there with the circle. And if I come down to the shadows or darker areas, it'll be marked on the graph down at the bottom where the shadows are. Now the cool thing is if I click and drag up, watch the graph, that's going up, which is brightening up the shadow areas. And you can see in the image itself, it's also opening up those shadows, which is a good thing. Now I'm going to come up and click and drag on these highlights and bring the values down, the intensity down a little bit. And you can see now over on the right, that's also uh, happening with the curve. And I can move around the image, picking different points, more of a mid-tone area, brightening and darkening. And actually, working directly off the image this way, you can forget that you're working with a curve. You can actually see what is happening with the image itself, which is pretty satisfying. Now, a couple other things when you look over here at the graph, because the graph is very useful in terms of what information it's giving you. 
If you can see in the background the faint outline behind here, this is the actual histogram. So you can see in this picture here, there's a lot of pixels that are shoved over to the left, which means they're to the dark side. These are darker values. And then over in here, we have the lighter highlight values. Now, if I open up the histogram, you're going to see it's reflected there as well. I'm just keeping the histogram closed because I have more room to show you all the different controls with the tone curve here. So keep in mind that this is showing you what your values are originally and gives you a kind of a snapshot view of where the values are distributed. You may be wondering what these little split sliders are at the very bottom of the graph. These are for fine tuning your adjustments. And the way they work, they either expand the region or contract the region. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let me go ahead and take this split slider. If I move it to the right, I'm expanding that region to include more values. And I can do the same here with the midtones or the lights and darks. I can expand or contract. So it's a way of fine tuning the way that the graph is moving just by using these split control sliders. And you have to play around with that to get that just right. If you right click on the graph, you can reset all your regions or the splits, or you can reset the regions and splits. Reset the point curve and reset all. So let me go ahead and reset all right now. You may have noticed when you were working with this region curve that there's a little bubble that forms when I move that cursor up and down over the various regions. Now, what that bubble is doing, it's actually making sure that I don't overdo my adjustment. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I click and drag in these highlight areas and I'm going to pull it down, I can't go any farther down than that bubble will allow me. You'll see in a minute when we go over to the point curve how easy it is to overdo it. And by having some kind of constraints like this, it's harder for you to <laughs> really mess up your image. So that bubble will appear over the various regions. It basically gives you a barrier. You can't go any more or less, as you can see. You can still mess it up, which I've done here, but not nearly as much as you will with the point curve, which you'll see in a second. Okay, so I'm going to reset this. I could right click on the graph or I could also just hold Option Alt and reset everything. So let's move over to the point curve. And to do that, I'm going to select this little icon here on the lower right. Okay, so let's look at one more thing before we move to the point curve. And that's down here under point curve. You see linear, medium contrast, strong contrast. You can actually apply some presets just by clicking and selecting these various options. I'll go ahead and leave it back at linear for now. Okay, let's move over to the point curve. To get to the point curve, see this icon down at the bottom on the right? I'm going to click on that. So now we're out of the region tone controls, and we are in the point tone control. Now here, basically everything's conceptually the same. You've got the control over your tonal values by the graph here. So if I click on a midtone right in the middle of the graph and pull up, with the graph, I am now brightening the midtone. If I pull down, I'm darkening it. But unlike the region tone controls, watch what happens with this one. I can go way, 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 way too far. Either way. Okay, that's just one way you can mess up. And the other thing is you have control over so many more actual points. You can set more than, let's say, four, because that's what we were basically working with on the region tone controls, where four regions. Here, we can set well over a dozen points, with each one of them controlling specific tonal values. The chances for messing up are pretty great. Furthermore, you also can go into individual channels and work on red, green, and blue channels individually, but we'll just stay with RGB right now. Okay, so I've shown you basically how to brighten an image, how to darken an image. Let's go at it a little bit more in depth. I'm going to go ahead and select the target adjustment tool up here. We have that tool also in the point curve, like we did in the region tone curve. And now I can come over here and work directly off the image, which I find really useful. So for example, now I'm working in this region down here in the lower left-hand part of the graph, the shadow area. Now this time when I click, I'm setting a point there. And now if I click and drag that point, I'm brightening up that value. And now if I drag it down, I'm darkening those values. 
I'm also increasing the contrast. You see, as this part of the graph starts to become steeper, we increase the contrast in that region. So let's go over to the brighter areas of the image. Click there. Now you can see it's set up a point up in the top part of the tone curve. And now if I drag down, I will be darkening the highlights, flattening them out a little bit. And if I drag up, I brighten them. So right now I'm making a lot of pretty gross adjustments to this image. And that's the thing with the point tone curve is you can really go in there and, and do some pretty major work on the image. But you can also go in there and be very subtle and move just the slightest bit and control many, many, many more tonal values through movement of the curve. Once again, if you want to reset the curve, you right click, you can flatten it, go back to where you started from. You can also apply some presets, medium contrast and then strong contrast. If you want to delete certain points on the curve, hold your cursor over a point and then select delete control point. Now, I'm going to make a suggestion here that as far as starting out, you start out over here working with the region tone controls. Then when you're feeling ambitious, come back and start playing with the point tone curve. There's a lot more to it than what I've shown you here. But ultimately, this is where you're going to get the absolute most control. It just really does take some time to understand and do properly. All right, very good. Take some time to familiarize yourself with both the tone curve controls. See what happens with a variety of your own images when you move the tone curve sliders left and right. See what happens when you set your own points and drag up and down left and right. The process may seem daunting at first, but don't let it intimidate you. With Lightroom, you can always start over. And once you get the hang of curves, you'll be amazed at how much quality you can pull out of your image files.